Hey everybody, Kenny Ducey back here for Odd Shopper. I appreciate I finally got a chance. It's been such a wild and crazy US Open. I finally got a chance to go back through the comments. I appreciate the support. I had no idea. Uh, but no, in all seriousness, it's been an amazing US Open. I've said that in every video. Um, great buzz here. Another day when Serena Williams is going to take the court. Um, I think she is, I, I think that she should win her match against Alia Tomjanovic tonight. Little bonus pick. Not really, a, I'm, this is picks for Saturday, so this is not, I just think she's going to win. It's going to be hard to beat. I mean, Sam Sonova has been playing some insane tennis, probably the person to take Serena out. But I think nerves are going to be a big factor with Alia on the court tonight. So I think that should be a good match. But we have some bangers on the card for Saturday. I'm really looking forward to it. I've got my eyes on two Americans. One who's a favorite, probably too short of a favorite. One who's a dog, probably too long of a dog. Uh, and I'll give you uh, two ways to play the dog. And also I like the British, uh, former British number one, Dan Evans, against Marin Cilic. We'll talk about that. And then we'll get out of here. So let's talk about this first match, which I'm very excited for. I could talk about this match for 20 minutes. Let's see how long it takes. Jensen Brooksby and Carlos Alcaraz. Now this is going to be a stylistic clash. It's going to be a, a two diff completely different players. Now the one thing we have to talk about, the one thing we have to highlight is that both of these guys are insane competitors. Neither is going to relent at all in this match. Both are gonna come focused, locked in with their A game. The thing here is, you look at Carlos Alcaraz's last few matches, he has, first of all, he's started to lose a little bit this summer. You know, sunshine double, French, going into the French Open, did not seem like this guy would ever lose. Ever. Now he started to lose. You know, we saw him lose to Sebastian Corda, right? We, you know, uh, we saw him lose a match that we all thought he was going to win against Cam Nori when he came back. He's not quite in the top two. Like, he was quite literally top two for him. He was quite literally one of the two best players in the world earlier this, this season in spring going into summer. So he's beatable, and you know he, he blew a huge lead to Federico Correa in the third set, uh, a guy that he should have easily put away in his second round match. So I think he's a little bit vulnerable here. I also just think he there's the there's the possibility that he overlooks Brooksby a little bit. Brooksby is going to bother him so much. He bothers everybody. He pushed Daniil Medvedev as as we see here, pushed Daniil Medvedev to you know almost a, almost a three set match. He has beaten some of the best players in the world. Stefano Tsitsipas took a set off of Novak Djokovic here last year. And I just think that what he does is he comes out with this intensity. He comes out with this game plan that you're not really ready for. And he's going to neutralize your best weapon. And for Alcaraz, I think that he's going to really neutralize that forehand. He plays unbelievable defense. He has an unbelievable sense to, to read uh, the opponent. I think that he will chase down the Alcaraz drop shot to be ready for it when it comes. But I think Alcaraz probably gets through this match, but it's not going to be in three sets. Jensen Brooksby is definitely going to take one of the first two sets. He is, we all forget how good this guy was last year. He was ranked top 30 in the world at one point earlier this year. And last year, like I said, the, the, the meteoric rise, the run in D.C., the run here at the U.S. Open, he plays unbelievable tennis. And I think because there were, there were some injuries and, and he struggled on clay, he struggled on grass this year, surfaces he's not too comfortable on, people thought maybe last year was a fluke, and I think he's proving everyone wrong that, no, actually he is a good tennis player. And he served very well against Borna Cioric. He served very well against Dusan Lajevic. That's one thing that I also want to highlight. That was his one of his biggest weaknesses that everyone would talk about is that this guy can't serve. Looked fine. Uh, looked very composed on serve. Served his way out of some set points in that second set tiebreaker. Aced his way out of some second set uh, out of some set points in the tiebreaker, which was stunning. So Jensen Brooksby, I think, has a really good chance to win this match. I was on Jensen Brooksby to win a set minus 130 at DraftKings. That lo that number is long gone. So I'm going to go ahead and take Jensen Brooksby plus. Five and a half games here at plus 100. Uh, I, I think this is a, a solid price. Again, if you somehow can stumble on, stumble upon Jensen Brooksby to win a set at better than minus 150, go ahead and take that. But that number, I think, is gone just about everywhere. Brooksby plus five and a half games plus 100 is a good shout here. I really think he can win this match. I think he probably wins two sets, pushes this one pretty deep. That's my prediction here. 
You're not going to want to miss this match. It should be under the lights on Ash, if I had to guess. Well, by the time you're watching this, you very well may know what the, what the venue is going to be. But this is going to be a, a popcorn match, a match you do not want to take your eyes off of. And again, I, I really think this is a battle that we have been waiting to see for quite some time. And it's going, it won't disappoint. I really believe. I think Brooksby also, if you want to take another bet, Brooksby to win the first set is priced at plus 200. I would also take a look at that. And I, I will be on that as well. So I think the, the most confident bet is Brooksby game spread. But Brooksby first set, that also is, is a very good look. Because if he's going to take a set, it's probably going to be the first set. Uh, before we move on, we have a special limited time offer for New Year's of DraftKings Sportsbook. You definitely need to take advantage of this right now. Uh, bet at least $5 on any NFL or college football game. You'll get $200 instantly. It's really that easy. The link is in the video description below. You can claim your free $200. It's free money. What are you doing? Why are you passing up on that? You know, it's free. Free $200. Just, just, just sign up for DraftKings with the link below, please. Also, please... Do not bet on Diego Schwartzman tomorrow. I, I promise you, you do not want to bet on Diego Schwartzman. It's going to be a bad time, okay? It's going to be a bad time. Diego Schwartzman yesterday, uncharacteristic match. 35 winners and 42 unforced errors. 42 unforced errors in a three-step match for Diego Schwartzman. This took him three hours and 42 minutes to, to, to complete. A three-hour and 42-minute three-step match. And look at the break points one. For, for Alexi Popperin. Diego Schwartzman saved 14 break points. It should be 16 break points. That is insane. And he was unable to convert on 14. That is ludicrous numbers. Diego Schwartzman is playing some of the worst tennis that I have ever seen him play. He lost to Albert Ramos Vignolas on a hard court at, at a Masters 1000 earlier this year. He was getting smoked by Jack Sock in the first, first round. Sock was just pummeling him with forehands and serves. Sock gets hurt, retires after taking the first two sets. I, I don't know what else you need to see. I mean, look at the just 69 unforced errors for Popperin. The match was right there on his racket. I was standing, so I was standing on the court essentially. I was in disbelief at how how many chances Lexi Popperin let go, but. That's just the player he is, right? He's not a, Schwartzman's been so lucky to face Popper and a guy that is mentally kind of weak, loses his way, gets discouraged. And Jack Sock, a guy that has never had great fitness. Popper and, you know, uh, excuse me, Tiafo is not going to miss the chances that Popper was getting. Popper and I thought had a pretty good game plan. It was working for him. He's winning points at the net. And, uh, or, or trying to win points at the net, rather. He won 51% of those net points. Diego Schwartzman won 71% of his net points. Diego Schwartzman's not going to win 71% of points at the net against Francis Tiafo. I, I, and I just think Tiafo's going to hit him off the court here. Like, Schwartzman is giving his opponent so many chances. Tiafo's super aggressive on return. I do not see Schwartzman making, this, making it through here unscathed. So I'm going to go ahead and take Tiafo minus three and a half games. I think that's the best way to play this. Finally, the final bet that I like. Dan Evans, who's having an amazing summer. I like Dan Evans as an underdog here to Marin Cilic. I would play it up to plus 150. I believe you can get plus 155 right now. This guy's this guy looks great. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll show it here. Marin Cilic also having a great summer. But Dan Evans, the win at the Challenger seemed to, seemed to get, kickstart his season a little bit. The Montreal run was special. You know, I think the, the loss in Ishioka in Washington, D.C. was a little bit disheartening, a little bit shocking until you saw Nishioka run out to the finals. He was actually playing some really good tennis. Dan Evans almost beat Pablo Busta, who is playing like top seven tennis right now in Montreal. That guy looked insane. He beat Tommy Paul, Taylor Fritz, Andre Rublev in succession. That is not easy to do. He is going to be lethal on these courts where his slice plays up. He's won matches, plenty of matches here at the U.S. Open before. Had a tough draw last year when he had to run into Daniil Medvedev. But he looks great. Uh, he faced a huge server in Jiri Vesely. Just absolutely demolished him on return. 
the James Duckworth match, kind of tricky. Came through that one pretty. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to write off Dan Evans because he dropped the third set to, to a, a tough opponent in, in James Duckworth. And Marin Cilic, I, he's cooled down just a little bit for me. Fifteen and nine hard court record, not bad. But like, I don't know, man. It, it was kind of a struggle for him. It was kind of a struggle for him against uh, Ramos Vinolas, which I know is. We've been mentioning that name a few times. Like, you know, is that really that bad? I mean, I don't know. I, I just I don't see Chilich being the dominant force that he was in uh, in Paris. I also think that there is plenty of room here for Dan Evans to just throw Marin Chilich off with those backhand slices. Really, pre- Marin Chilich does not like scooping out backhands. He likes hitting a high backhand. He does not like hitting a low backhand. I think Dan Evans is going to make some headway in this match. I think he's going to win as an underdog. So three bets. That's what's going to happen later on in the tournament. Not as many bets to choose from. Not as many matches to choose from. But I think we have an absolute heater with Brooksby and Alcaraz. Looking forward to that match. Brooksby, live underdog. Take the first set. Take the spread. Like Dan Evans as an underdog as well. And then Francis Tiafo. He should be like minus 300 against Schwartzman. So throw him in some parlays. Take the minus three and a half games. We'll see you tomorrow. Kennedy signing off for Odd Shopper.